Hey everybody, Steve Matsu here. And today I'm going to talk to you about hitters parks. It's something I know a lot about. It's something I have a lot of experience with. If you want to know how to get the most out of your team in a high offensive environment, this is the place to be. Let's get right to it. When constructing a team in a hitter's park, new players tend to make the mistake of adding Albert Bell types, Gary Sheffield, big hitters, and they don't concern themselves with the defense. Or they'll go the complete opposite route and they'll get three aces and go that route. But really, neither one of those things are successful. While both of these options have some merit, I mean, you do need to score a lot of runs and you do need to prevent runs. This just isn't the way to go about it. Instead, what owners should be looking for is good, well-rounded players. Players that hit well against left-handers and right-handers. Players who defend well. Players who run well. Don't skimp at the corners. You want gold glovers on both corner infield spots. As far as middle infielders go, you can get by with an average range there, but you need an excellent fielding percentage. Your middle infielders should be sure-handed. All of the hitters in your lineup from 1 to 9 need to be adequate hitters. You need a competent hitter in every single lineup spot. These hitters should be able to hit maybe not equally as well, but decently against left-handers or right-handers. Your players are going to have to play every game. You're not going to have a bench. Your bullpen is going to need to be huge. There's going to be a lot of games that are 10 to 9, 13 hit affairs. 17 hit affairs. That's the kind of games you're going to be playing in. Your pitchers are going to be blown up. You are going to have a lot of games where your starting pitcher is out of the game by the third inning. You need an extremely large bullpen. 13 pitchers is not out of the question. Playing in these kind of parks, roster space is at a premium. And one of the ways you can alleviate this is by shuttling your starting pitchers back and forth from the minor leagues. Whichever one is pitched most recently, send them to the minors and bring up the other ones so you don't have to carry all five on your active roster at one time. The roster space crunch also affects your bench. You're not going to be able to carry many bench players. You're not going to be able to run many platoons. A DH league is optimal because you really can't carry pinch hitters either. If you do decide to platoon, it should probably be a catcher. Playing in a place like Coors Field, it's not a wise decision to invest in someone like Mickey Cochran or Yogi Berra because they'll reach their batter's faced minimum quickly and you won't get to use them as much. They'll need more time off. I generally spend about 70% of my salary cap on hitting and about 30% on pitching. Well, hitting and defense, let's say. When I spend 70% on hitting, I'm also spending some of that 70% on run prevention. So it's not like I'm completely avoiding that. And the reason I spend so much on hitting is because I need, like I said, I need my players to play all the time, day in, day out, never get pinch hit for, play every day, play good defense, and make it where I don't need a bench. As far as putting my pitching staff together goes, I generally like to run an all right-handed rotation. I'm not concerned with the starter's durability too much. And I'll explain that why in a moment. As for my middle reliever, I like him to be the opposite hand of my starting pitchers, which are generally always right-handed. So I like a left-handed middle reliever. And the reason I like this left-handed middle reliever is I want to cause my opponent to start switching his players immediately, as soon as I can. Fourth inning, fifth inning, I want him using his platoon players. As soon as the sim will allow him to take his players out, that's when I want it to happen. After our long relievers come in and we force the platoon switches, that's when I like to start playing matchups. Flip the pitchers in and out. All my relievers are set to one to pull for reliever. And I just keep changing as much as I can until we get to the closer who's definitely a right-hander because by now we've switched their team and we want to try to get the platoon advantage. As far as team settings and cores go, it's basically ultra-conservative. 
you're going to hit a lot of doubles, triples, and homers. You're going to get a lot of hits, period. You do not want to run into outs. Don't try to steal a lot of bases. Be cautious on the base pass. You don't really need to try to take that extra base. You're coming in to score anyway. Set your starting pitchers to pull early. They're, they're just going to get blown up. Let's just get them out of there quickly. Don't spend a lot of money on them. It's not going to work out for them. They're pitching in a bandbox. They're pitching in Coors Field. Tough luck for those guys. But when they do come out, you want that left-handed reliever in there to start the platooning early, as early as you can. I know it's like the sixth inning or seventh inning or whatever. Wh- whatever it is, you want them to start making moves to limit their bench. Let's get their bench down too. Just like ours is. We don't have a bench. We don't need our opponents having one either. So, so there you have it. That strategy works for me. I've been really successful playing in Coors Field. I've played in Coors Field a lot of times, and I've won more often than not. I think it's the easiest park to play in. If you follow this advice, I believe you'll have sex. Did I just say I believe you'll have sex? (laughs) Well, I hope you have sex, but I believe you'll have success. Turnbuckle Brothers, man.